Welcome to Listen Up, Marianne. Nice to have Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. So you're based in Portugal, right? Yeah, Porto, Portugal. Oh. It's in the north. I've never been to Porto specifically. Oh, Porto is so nice. It's <laughs> nice. I know, everyone says It's a that bit colder, you. but the people are more... I don't know. The, I, I don't. I don't. I don't want Lisbon people to get mad at me. <laughs> but it's just different. I I would say that the water in Portugal in general is disrespectfully cold. Yeah, very cold. And me, yeah. right? I try to go there and enjoy the beach and stuff. Like the weather is great. The people are great. The food is great. The water only possible in the south. And still, yeah, yeah that, that's that's where I would go. Like yeah. next time, but I have to try Porto. Do you want to like to a bit explain like how you heard about the show Listen Up and how we got in yeah, touch? Yeah, sure. And then let's talk about you, like so, what you have in your podcast. I've been on the music scene for as long as I can remember. Throughout the years, I've been in a couple of bands. But then being in a band is like having a marriage with five people or more. So if you are not all in the same page, it, gets really complicated. It came the time where I was like, okay, I'm going to do my own thing. I've been wanting to do it for many years and it finally came the time for it. So last year in 2023, I launched the first single and it was amazing because it got a lot of recognition worldwide, really. So it was amazing. Had the pleasure to do a music video for it also. And the music video I'm super proud of, of the results. It has been an amazing journey. And finding you was like, I, I think it was on Instagram, really. Just maybe on my feed, just some short videos. I think it was something like that. I'm always on the lookout for new things, new podcasts, new people to connect. I value a lot, like, the network. So, yeah, that, that's how I, I found you. Yeah. The gods of the Instagram algorithm decided that we were going yeah, to... Yeah, it was on, on my feed, yeah, for me. <laughs> going on socials is excruciating for me. I, I'm, yeah. I'm really not built for that, so I have to do it now because I have a business and because, of course, having a way to market things, to discuss things, to, to push some ideas and to trigger some discussions. Yeah, you just, really you just got to be there. Yeah, a, a bit too yeah. much though. So you really feel like there is the this kind of like machine that is yeah, giving the pace of which like we should exchange on. Absolutely. But I've posted a lot of videos about Jack Dorsey and a lot of people basically like brainstorming about how we could make a better algorithm and how is it the end, the for you feed, right? Where you have basically yeah. your Marianne, you wake up in the morning and you have a video of, that pops in your in your feed. Yeah. And, Sometimes you understand why, sometimes you don't. Or is there a next step? Like there is another evolution possible. There is the guy from Patreon, Jack Conte, that is also working a lot on it. And a lot of people are trying to find ways to make it feel a bit less technocratic, I would say. Where yeah. like you, you, you were still able like to actually enjoy the platform without feeling that you have this kind of dopamine rush all the time to scroll and to yeah, discover it's crazy. content. Do you use a lot of socials? Every day, a lot. And it's crazy, the algorithm and all that stuff. It's just so different, like what pops up in my feed or what pops up on my boyfriend's feed, for example. It's just so different. Like things I see on his feed that I will never see in mine and the opposite. And sometimes even like my friends post, they post things and they, oh, haven't you, didn't you see? And I'm like, no, it didn't pop up on my feed, you know? And it's, it's getting more and more complicated. Yeah, you know? I, I wonder because like we're a certain amount of humans on Earth. And so I think that helps a lot to curate what we can see. But yeah. I read about the evolution where at first it was chronological. And so it's really the last person that posted is what's going to pop in your feed or vice versa. Then it yeah. became just your follower, the people you follow. Yeah. And now it's for you. So basically the algorithm is going to decide. Yeah, it, it changed. Good. Yeah. And it's always yeah. changing. How do you... So, d just go back to you, right? So, you're born and raised in Portugal? Yeah. 
Okay, and so did you, were you in music since the very beginning or did you do something else before yeah, you Yeah, I've always been, I mean, I studied marketing, but I've always been connected with music. And when it was about time to decide, okay, what am I going to, to do for a living? That's when I went to the music school and I took the course on, on singing because I was like, okay, no, I'm not, I'm not going to waste any more time on other things that, you know, my big passion is music, so I'm just going to follow it so that's what i did and so i took the course and i did a lot of studying and then i ended up also being a teacher at the place i i studied but then as i travel a lot i i quit so i have more more free time and more flexible agenda and yeah i i've been focusing on my solo project since last year and I also do a lot of, of like cover gigs and I have like this events company of mine where we do like weddings, corporate events, but two different things. Just one thing, the covers and, and the corporates and the other is my yeah. personal project. My I know that, to be honest, it's a lot of artists I know are actually doing this, like to have a cover band or to be able to go and play live yeah. for people with your music and other is actually for a lot of people what pays the bills. Yeah, that's it. I, you know, we are was, still doing what we love, but yeah, yeah, like we earn money with that, so we can spend it all in our passion. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. you need to compromise sometimes, which it's again would make sense if it's a yeah, yeah, it's a part of the evolution of an artist's career, I guess. It's yeah. one of the things that we discussed a lot with all of people around me is the fact that catalog so music that is older than three years mm -hmm. is now representing something like 70 percent of what everyone is streaming so if you have released your album or your last single in the last three years the amount of attention that you're going to have from people is only 30 percent of their time yeah so it's pretty tough because in front of you you have the beatles and taylor swift and bts yeah. So yeah, it must be really tough. So it's very interesting because you combined marketing and now music. So how yeah. do you use the ecosystem, the music landscape to basically... Well, it got pretty handy, that, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you can like walk me through the acquisition pipeline of a new fan, let's say, right? From the moment someone has never heard your song to the moment they will be willing to add you in one of their playlists or to be able yeah. to pay for a ticket to see you live? I don't follow any like specific formula because I don't think there's such a thing. And I think it's a lot by trial and error that you see what works and what doesn't. And also things are constantly changing. So you never know maybe what didn't work on the first time, it will work on another time. But basically, I think nowadays, and what I try to do, my approach is have more this personal approach with more emotion, with uh, the human side of it, because we, we are in this digital world full of this standardized things that I feel it's so important and people connect so much when they see like the human side of it. And that's why people love to see like behind the scenes or people recording in the studio and all that stuff. Because we as human beings crave for that connection. So I always I try to do that with my art and when I present my things on socials. And it's something that I'm still working on. But I think it's really important to do that to, to create this solid fan base. Because when you're starting, you, you don't ha have a big following i think it's better to connect with people one-on-one -on -one and go from there than just throw something at the wall and see what sticks. I don't know. yeah so at the moment it's fair to say a, a lot of one-to-one -one meetings for example i would assume yeah. like at some of your gigs for example plus a lot of content on social to basically on socials to basically find your niche yeah, You're and I'm, I still need to put the project on stage because the solo project is something very recent. It only began in 2023 and I'm just releasing some singles, some music videos, and then the next stage will be putting the project on stage, doing the live gigs 
And I'm so eager to do that because that's where you connect with the fans. That's where you like build your fan base. And so I'm actually super excited for that pretty soon, I hope. But yeah, that's how it has been with the bands and with friends and colleagues around me. I think uh, it's so much better when you just have a, this personal connection with a fan than just cold emailing everyone. I used to do that on the when I knew nothing. Just cold emailing everyone, like press, magazines and all that stuff. And then it will be like no responses, nothing at all. And when I started this approach of just being more chilled and reaching out with videos, with audios of me talking directly to that person, very personalized and things have changed. Like the feedback has been different and a lot of you things that via DMs, for example, or yeah, face to face. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in Portugal, so face-to-face -face also, but with people that are on the outside, even from magazines and all that stuff, I've been able to get some things just because they said you were different. Like, you sent me an audio, you showed me the real you, and I connected with you, you know, on a human, more human level. And uh, that's what stood me out from the other artists. That's that are still doing what I used to do, like the cold emailing and all that stuff. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are so, so many artists in the world. It gets really complicated to, to stand out. So I'm just, I think it's better this more authentic approach. Just be yourself. Yeah, so you would be authentic on socials and then the way you would communicate to try to pitch yourself, if that yeah. makes sense, is to have a more original way of communicating to people so yeah. you would basically instead of just what do you mean instead of a cold email so just text basically you would make something a bit more interactive showing a bit more what you're doing absolutely because more I see, personalized yeah i see the similarities about like when you're looking for a job for example and people are trying to make an original cv or even like me when i try to pitch my company right there's a moment where you can just send a deck and there's another one to say like I can come and meet you right there like tomorrow or yeah. like, hey, this is like a video of me talking about this on stage. So you think that the, the extra effort is one of the things that would separate you from most artists that are not putting enough effort. So that would be an advice that you would give to people to really put yeah. in, put in the and consistency get a, a lot of no's, I guess. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I think everyone, it's normal until you have a yes, you will get a number of no's. But Tell me about it. I'm building a business, so <laughs> I've got yeah. a fair share of notes. It's yeah. definitely the most of the interactions. So you would say the first thing is to try to stand out, obviously. But now, like, for example, whatever you're going to say today, anyone is going to try to replicate it. And so I feel like we, we started to reach the saturation of that. You know what I mean? Because now you're going to be like, okay, if it's not just text, I'm going to add a song snippet, a video of me. But then media-wise, that's it. Text, audio, video, you don't have much more that you can do. And so if everyone yeah. starts doing this... Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it gets really saturated. Yeah. Yeah, because then after, the curation can happen at the machine level. And so that's the algorithmic playlists or curation on socials, for example. Yeah. Or human curation. And even here, how do you do when you are 7 billion humans on Earth? And you're just like, yeah. I also send a video and a sn sound snippet, but they didn't answer me. In, it's getting harder. Yeah, still, harder. yeah, yeah. It's not, uh, you know, it's not a certain thing. I, I think it, it's better, but it's not guaranteed just because a lot of people do it that way, different. But still, there is a lot of people who still don't do it because out of laziness, for example. I guess like at some yeah. point it's a, it's a it's a marathon it's not like yeah I, I I've had this uh, this ex this example where I reached out to someone and they didn't answer and then we got to connect again like one or two years later so it's really a matter of you know just try again and try again consistency yeah well to be honest that's a, a good motto for life yeah, you, for everything. Being consistent. It's the compound yeah. effect, right? I guess a little win plus a little win at the end equals a, yeah. a big leap. So what do you think then about people that actually get to that level of recognition 
that you're trying to get or awareness, by the way, that you're trying yeah, to yeah. get via all these kind of cold calls, cold emails, cold reach out, um, that get it directly because they went viral on socials. It seems like mm -hmm. there is this trend where yeah. the, most of the A&R departments of labels, for example, are now basically telling you do more TikToks. It's not the same for yeah. everyone, right? But that's something a lot of artists are relaying. And so people are just saying like, well, if I already have my audience online, why would I still need that? And actually most of the time, it seems like the people that popped on socials because I guess the algorithm gave it a little boost. And sometimes yeah. you have raw talent like mm -hmm. Noah Kanan, for example, with Sticky Season. I think that is really amazing. And it's just like, okay, you see him live and the guy was already an artist, plus he went yeah. viral. So you have someone that actually was discovered properly thanks to an algorithm and the audience. And then you have people that seems like to just to appear and disappear very yeah. quickly. What do you think about that? How do you position yourself there? I think uh, when you go viral, it, it can be very good or very bad because it can be like those 15 minutes of fame. So sometimes it's better if it takes a while, but you are like, keep moving and you're getting there because sometimes you are like, you do this and then this, and that's, I think that's worse. Uh, and a lot of, of these artists are independent and sometimes they don't know how to proceed and to like when they are there to keep all those people things happen like that but i don't know i'm, I'm not sure what i feel about um TikTok and just going viral i think TikTok. i mean because there are so it's so saturated and you have such amazing artists there it's it's re really really complicated i mean uh, even when I, I post on TikTok, I feel like I'm shooting towards the wall. It, fe it feels like it doesn't reach anyone. But then again, I feel like it's consistency because you, you see, you, you have these kids posting like cover songs every day, like three times a day. Uh, so I imagine maybe, I don't know if I have the patience for that. Maybe if I was 15 years old today, uh, you know, instead of like singing those covers in my room, I would probably be like posting them on TikTok. That's what they do, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's, it's really tricky. I see recently I, I, I saw like two examples reflecting, in my opinion, the two different types of fame that you could get through TikTok, Instagram and so on, right? You had yeah. this, this girl that started something to say, hey guys, please remix that. And she says, I'm looking for a guy in finance, right? And I don't know if you saw that. Like, I'm yeah, yeah, for, yeah, that, that uh, trendy audio. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you had an... We, so in that case, literally, she's not even an artist or musician, but for whatever reason, that and people yeah. like got over it. And she's like on the cover of magazines and so on. You don't know where it's going to land, but it's definitely a bit more than 15 seconds of fame, right? And then yeah, you had yeah. this other uh, girl, maybe it was a year ago. I'm two days into college. I don't know if you remember this. I'm two yeah. days into college. Na, 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 no, na, na, na. not that one. Super cool. And it, she's really like uh, uh, someone that was trying to be an artist, right? She was in college, but she just wrote that song in the middle of a lot of others. And for example, I thought yeah. that that song was actually pretty cool. But her fame kind of like popped because of the song. So it's mm -hmm, not because yeah. she was doing something that was like, oh my God, she's so funny, like a uh, hawk to her or all these kind of things. It's more like, oh, the song is really nice. And then people started yeah. covering it. And so... What is very interesting to me is that I don't know exactly because I checked like what's happening with this girl. I saw like her follower count like exploded, but I haven't seen a musical project or something more coming out of it, despite her being an artist and going viral. Meanwhile, the the lady that became like an influencer that was not an artist just because of some yeah, yeah, viral yeah. moment is still being talked about. And so for me, I'm really like, Puzzled. I don't know what you think about this. What, what do you think? It's crazy. Also, when a lot of artists go viral and they don't even have any original songs, it's just, I don't know, some cover they posted or something like that. And sometimes when they go viral, maybe they don't have nothing to show, nothing more. And they gotta be very quick when they 
go viral to put something out. And maybe, for example, the case of the other girl, I don't know what she's doing, I have no idea. But imagine she has something like any sort of product ready to sell that will overlay the other one, the talented girl who has, who doesn't know what to do. Yeah, but for me, that's, uh, that's crazy because, because again, yeah. we would have a lack of talent. You know, I would be like, okay, it makes sense that basically we use for marketing people yeah. that made something really funny or really original one day. But if you have someone that is actually an artist and has the marketing reach, in my opinion, that's the person that should sign a deal with, I don't know, Burberry or some kind of brand that wants to actually market yeah. something. So I really don't get how the algorithm works. Yeah, that, but that nowadays it's me. like that. It's like, for example, journalists, uh, students who are studying journalism and influencers. And there are a lot of TV shows and a lot of uh, people that are choosing influencers over like uh, people who have studied journalism, for example. You know, just because they look, just because of visuals, just because of vanity numbers, the, the numbers of their followers and all that stuff. So it's crazy. Yeah. It's, it is. Okay. It's, but... it's like, it doesn't matter anymore if you have a degree or something, they, they don't care. To be honest, I think this is like yeah. pretty cool in the sense of like, so yeah, I think when it, it comes to like, for example, I, I couldn't access a lot of like very good schools and so on and not because I would not have been able to pass the test or the exam, yeah, but yeah. simply because I could not afford an apartment in the city, for example, right? Because I would live far yeah. from my literally village, right? In the countryside. So I think this is nice. Plus, like you saw that we, we were able to observe that a lot of people with a lot of degrees were actually really bad people, yeah. not that smart and pretty corrupt. So it's actually cool that you could see uh, self-made people that, that have that platform yeah, and that sure. ability to talk to other people. But yeah, now it's, who is curating that? This is where we, like, discovery has, like, hit, is hitting a wall. Just like, where do we go next? Yeah. I don't know. The, that's actually a, a way for me to transition to the music ecosystem, right? To zoom yeah. in a little bit more. Now we talk TikTok and so on. At the moment, for example, how do you distribute your music? I don't know if you use a distri uh, distribution platform. Yeah, I use DistroKid. Yeah, okay. I've been using so, it for, for some years, yeah. Also okay, with so my past bands. With your what, sorry? The bands I've been going throughout the oh, years. Oh, the past band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah, sorry. yeah. Also. Okay. So you distribute through DistroKid and I guess on all the music platforms, right? And then you yeah. cross your finger that you're going to find the audience in one of them. At the yeah. moment, how do you manage to convert your fan base that you would have, for example, on Instagram? I don't know if it's your biggest account, but like on Instagram mm -hmm. to discovering you on a music platform? For me, it's very complicated because, for example, I can see through Spotify, for example, that most of my listeners are in the in the US. But then how do I reach to them? Like for them to find me on Instagram or I can't. So there's that gap. I feel that it's lacking. A lot of things, things are no, that's Are great missing. because at the end, I'm going to yeah. ask you about all the missing features that you would see. This is good yeah. because that's on listen, for example, right? You would have a way to, to know. Yeah, like who, who is this is. person who's listening from uh, Mississippi or we have no idea. We just know there was someone in that place hearing our music and enjoying it. So it would be nice if we could connect like do the, what I said, that one on one with the person. Yeah, because that way they would become uh, not just a listener, but maybe a potential fan. So it will be Aligned. better first. The way I see it is that it, it should be a bit like on socials in the sense like if someone follows you, like it, it's kind of like normal that you're aware that person Yeah, and exists. you can like see the profile and interact. Yeah, this is where I think there will be a limitation because of data protection and so on. And so I feel as an artist, it would be hard to let the artist directly access their potential fan profiles, right? Because of course you're going to yeah. imagine a lot of predatory behavior, right? Where you're going to spam people and so on. But yeah. if you would give the ability to the fan to follow in an anonymous manner, right? The same way they would do now on most music platforms, which would help mm -hmm. the platforms to curate the music that you would like, but also to activate notifications 
I think that that would be a big leap forward because that would enable yeah, you then to be now able to send them something. I have a new single, I have a new merch, I have a new tour coming in. Yeah, that's because it. they would have asked for it. And I think that this is clearly missing, which is exactly why this will be our, yeah. our platform, shameless plug. But the, and it's missing it. because Spotify and it's owned by major labels, so. So they don't really I, I'm not, need it, as right? As you can imagine, it's their competitors, right? But uh, to be, but I'm going to try to be as objective as possible. So they are not owned by the major labels anymore, right? They used to have some shares in Spotify, but most of them like offloaded them when they went when they IPO'd. But still, the amount of power that they have over platforms like Spotify is more than decent. I think it's extreme, yeah. <laughs> so it's <laughs> <stay> politically correct. <laughs> yeah, because you can imagine that it's not TikTok, right? There was literally a, a battle between TikTok and Universal not long ago. Yeah, and yeah. basically TikTok got the upper hand because, well, TikTok can do without Universal Music. But yeah, the other absolutely. way around is a bit difficult, which is why mm -hmm. you saw Taylor Swift literally saying, even if she signed with Universal, to be like, well, I'm still going to get my music there. The issue yeah. with a platform like a Spotify where most, again, of your listening has been directed towards the majors, if you mm -hmm. remove one, then suddenly you don't fulfill the promise of all the music in the world in your pocket. Yeah. Which is a blessing and a curse at the same time, right? At, for once you can say, hey, you have Drake, Taylor Swift, and everyone, every big artist that you sign with the majors on the platform. Okay, that's mm -hmm. super cool. But on the other hand, as the platform, you kind of sign a pact that you cannot back up from, right? Because now your promise is all the music in the world in a pocket. That's why, mm -hmm. for example, the way we are going to start showing our product market fit is start with the independence because we think that a lot of artists could actually be independent and you have yeah. a lot of very talented artists that started in And a lot of people who have like followings like uh, fan bases yeah, yeah and are indie so yeah exactly and so and i believe that if we can show a blueprint to basically show that there is a, a yeah a music ecosystem that is possible that works for a lot of fans where you're just like okay i don't have everything but i have most of the artists that i like and by the way if some of them are missing i'm going to just wait to see if they are popping up but i'm also going to discover maybe new ones so I think it's don't like, you, but don't you think yeah. the game changer would be like having at least one major artist? Do you think that will help or not? So it really? depends what you mean by major. If you mean like a very popular, you know, like, yeah, like or Beyonce famous or something. artist, right? Actually, so, so this is what is interesting. Beyonce is not in that category because she's very popular, famous and signed with the majors. But you have a lot of very big, famous artists. I cannot say the name now because yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of them were in touch with them, but they are not signed with the majors. And so when we will launch, they will basically yeah, say, hey, are. you can follow us everywhere and on listen. So that's why I think that yeah. the concept of like, you have to go through the majors and so on to be big, to be able to make a living is actually not mm -hmm. true. But showing it at the platform level, I think is the next step, the evolution yeah. of music platforms which is what I'm going to... And what to do you show. think? Uh, I think uh, us indie artists, when it comes to, oh, but, oh, we got to be on Spotify because everyone's in there, aren't like, oh, my friends only have, only use Spotify and all that stuff. What do you think about that? How is it going to the mindset, change mindsets? Okay, so that, that's going on. Listen, there you Yeah, um, that, that's, so... that's like a... Uh, oh one doubt that I have. Yeah. Oh, the, I, 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 I can spare a minute on it. The incumbents, right? People that have already been in that business before you. What I tell everyone is when Facebook arrived, people told them that MySpace already existed and they were yeah. literally doing the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. Now, when was the last time you went on MySpace? Yeah, that's exactly my point. And so I think that the fact that it's going to be difficult, Obvious, 100%. Yeah. The fact that people want to have their audience on Spotify, want to have their music on Spotify because, and others, by the way, because that's, this is where you have the biggest user base, fair, because mm -hmm. you want to be discovered. 
but right yeah. now and it's been a few years now you're still not most, being discovered yeah yeah most artists are realizing that first of all even the discovery is being heavily biased right you have this stuff called discovery mode that means yeah, that yeah, hey, yeah. Help everything you is pay to win nowadays yeah yeah so we are going to help you being discovered but you're going to give us an extra 30 percent the second one is that you make no money at all and i think that yeah. this is what actually it should boils down to is that the new royalty model that we have for example ensure that when if your fans only stream you their money mm -hmm. is only going to you yeah. it's that simple but that's not what's going on at the moment oh. on all these big major platforms yeah. so i think that if you show that first of all you actually make the fair amount of money you're supposed to make because of your fan base right a thousand fans is already a lot if they listen mm -hmm. to you non-stop yeah. you're supposed to make most of the money that they would give literally to the platform if not all if yeah. they listen just to you the second one is if we give you more abilities to manage your fans right more features just like what we discussed before the fact that now you can enable an artist to contact you for example right yeah or the fact that you can access not just the music but also the experiences that's our other big thing is that normally now every time you want to access an artist experience you need to go outside of music platforms you need to branch mm -hmm. out which means create another account credit card address yeah. blah 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 right it should be on the same platform and it should not be just concert it should also be merch it should also be services we have a lot of yeah. artists right now that have to create a patreon account just to be able to share a remix of their song a lot of artists right now have to create a bandcamp account just to be yeah. able to sell a song why mm -hmm. all of this is not on the same platform because if i love what yeah. marianne is doing i would like to be able to tell her hey uh, could you make a remix of that song with the name of my partner for example because it's yeah. her birthday soon Th this is something that i would be willing to pay for this is something mm -hmm. a lot of people would be willing to pay for and i always 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 yeah. point at the gaming industry the gaming industry when you see a gamer and you join them on twitch or wherever you can tip them you can yeah, yeah, yeah. buy their merch directly you can buy a digital collectible on the same platform you don't have to create 10 accounts it's way simpler to be a fan in the gaming world than it is to be in music and i think this is where we yeah. need to go in music absolutely Th that's, that's and th what during COVID, some platforms that were were good they had some good things i'm not talking about distribution i'm just talking about other thing during COVID, there were like these companies i did a bunch of live streams i think i did once per week or something and people could also like donate and it was really like just gaming but instead of gaming we were singing doing our thing as musicians and people would give donations we would have like a chat just just like the gamers and it was really really nice the thing is they they switched a bit so i at the beginnings, they were like paying a lot to the artists, but then they started taking a lot of commissions and they changed the whole thing. So, yeah. During the pandemic, I saw that a lot of yeah. people going on YouTube or on Twitch to basically perform live and do this. Yeah. Of course, as always, you go on these big macro platforms for the reach. The issue yeah. is that if you go there, you're going to make money at the beginning, but not on the long run. My whole point is to tr that the whole music industry needs to start thinking about the fact that we need to give the artists the ability to create sustainable business models, not to just yeah, arrive. Things, and things really to need to change, I think. I, I don't understand why they haven't already, uh, because it's so Every crazy. Day. The music ecosystem, I'm not going to say industry, but ecosystem is not the best when you talk about innovation. In my opinion, yeah. it's one of the worst industry in the world to innovate. I uh, can be wrong. That has been my very subjective experience so far. You find people, right? And so you are getting there. But compared to other industries, it's going a bit too slow. And I feel yeah, like this it. is again, uh, the concept of like the cycles, right? It's going to get there. Like every industry, you will always have a big yeah. threat, 
yeah, a big threat will arrive and basically shake everyone up and we'll be like, okay, either we die or we adapt. And adapting means yeah. we need to help people that want to innovate. I mm -hmm. think that might be AI. Yeah. That's a great segue. <laughs> I think that AI might be this big threat that will basically... That's very interesting up. because the single I'm about to release on the 17th July talks about that thematic of the AI. It's like a nod to the authenticity and resistance of the human being in a world that's more and more like AI dominated when more technological so it, it, it really has that message of, aren't we going to, aren't we being forced to adapt ourselves? But still, aren't we supposed to keep like our essence and our, our authenticity, you know? So I agree. Yeah. I agree. I, I read a lot about extreme rationalization and pragmatism and yeah. technocracy, basically, right? Versus a bit of philosophy and humanism. It's very difficult because there's no clear divide between both, right? But it's like appreciating simple things that might not be efficient. It's really weird for me because I'm an engineer, right? So I used to be like, how the hell is it possible that this is not optimized, right? But then yeah. you realize that in a lot of aspects of life, actually things that are not optimized are what makes us happy. I just read uh, something, a total tangent here, but I just read something about American cities, right? Why they don't look as cute and good as American, as European cities. European. Mm -hmm. And you basically find out that at some point, a, a guy decided, I think that the best is to put the highway in the middle, right? To optimize. Again, it, yeah, it yeah. makes sense for an engineer. It's just like, why would you do like a whole detour around the city? You could, you could make it pass through it. Or why would we have like mid-sized building? Just put skyscrapers in the middle and normal sized houses around. Mm -hmm. In Europe, it seems way more chaotic if you go to Porto, I'm sure, Lisbon, yeah. Paris, London. You have yeah. these small streets and stuff, but we like it more. And basically the thesis of the person who was posting that was, it's way better for humans. If you have communal centers, you know, if you have these kind of small streets and small villages and so on, okay. like, you have these meeting points where humans are social mm -hmm. beings basically yeah. gather and have ways to entertain themselves. If you have just big highways, then everything it's, is built around drive through more... McDonald's. Yeah, and it's not and so it's... personal, right? Yeah, and it's a bit the same for yeah. music, I would say. So that was a big tangent, but music, yeah. it's kind of the same. If you try to make it a bit too algorithmic, at some point, there's going to be a reaction for people be like, I heard that song or that template a thousand times. I really Absolutely. would like to hear something different. And that's one of the things that people start pointing out more and more. We still have a lot of very good creative people, a lot of different ways of playing guitar, of harmonizing. It's just that the algorithms at the moment, don't mm -hmm. find them because it's very hard to find what is the secret sauce that people now will like. Yeah. And of course, the drive of these platforms is to have more and more engagement. And this is where AI and dopamine, which are two yeah. of my favorite topics, basically start colliding. Because if you apply the same templates to thing, it's perfectly optimal. You are going to hook people up. They are going yeah. to be on your app, on your platform all the time because you engineered your app for that let alone the fact that they're going to feel miserable because these short dopamine kicks are basically increasing suicide rates around the world. They're increasing, uh, diminishing, they're diminishing happiness around the world. You have a lot of studies that show that physiologically speaking, yeah. Gen Z is the least happy over the last, I think, 70 or 100 years. Imagine like the, all the external pressures when it comes just to social media, visuals and you know, like yeah. imagine the children nowadays it must be very complicated. It, it must be extremely tough. I am yeah. really happy that I grew up in the, in the 90s. But yeah. the whole point is this, like how do you find a way to balance this? And at the moment with AI, for example, to stay on one topic, I always 
go in several tangents and I really that's not good at all for a podcast format <laughs> I really have to find it. my editor is so mad at me but the whole point is that with AI the big debate at the moment is what is fair use what is copyright what can we use how can we use your work if it's on the internet doesn't mean we can use it so the new CEO of AI at uh, Microsoft for example literally just said if the music is on the open web go define open web, right? Is YouTube yeah. open web? If it's on the open web, it's like a freeware. So we yeah. should be able to train our artificial intelligence, a robot, to basically get smarter and produce the next hits. Yeah. What do you think about this? I, I think it's terrible that everything it's like in the early stages and still it's so good, like the, the voices they do with AI. My brother showed me the other day, like, oh, I'm going to show you a song. And he was like, do you know who this is singing? And I was like, guessing. And he was like, no, no. And I, who is it? And he was like, it's AI. And I was like, no, shit. Yeah, it's AI. It, it looked so real. And I mean, it, it can be good for certain occasions. Uh, for example, imagine like um, you need something done very fast. So you could go with AI because it will be faster. But then you have the opposite side, which is like, for example, a TV show that needs a jingle or a song or whatever. If they are hiring like the AI thing, who's like, who's earning money with that? And, you know, what's going to happen with the artists and a lot of professions, really. With That's AI. the issue. That's yeah. the issue. But the issue is, is mainly that no one said that we didn't have enough creativity, first of all. It's like, you're not yeah. solving a problem that people were in the streets saying, we need more music, No, right? no, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the other thing, I saw this thing, which was great when, when you are saying that, because it, it is something like, Oh, we are training AI for like creativity purposes. Mm -hmm. And there was this girl saying, I don't know if you saw it on the internet, it was something like, oh, uh, but I could use like AI to do my dishes, not to do my work, something like that. Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. It's like, t tell me it's going to wash my dishes and clean yeah. my laundry and I'm all in. Yeah. But no one ever said like, oh my gosh, there are not enough creative people. Oh my gosh, yeah. we don't have enough songs a year. You know what I mean? No one was like, Gosh, yeah. I listen to everything. What am I going to do next? Right? <laughs> Said yeah. no one. And th this is one of the things like solving a problem that is very easy hack to be honest, because no one asked for it. But it's just easy to actually prey on the weak. In that case, the artist, because they have no way to actually have a common voice, which is why it was very interesting that the majors actually sued these big AI companies to be like, mm -hmm. wait a minute, that sounds a lot. Yeah. like some of our music. So the fact you said you recreated things and literally the notes are the same, the intonations are the same, mm -hmm. the harmony is the same. Like, what did you actually create from this? Or is it just you saying that you remixed out of nowhere? Yeah. That's what, for, for me, the other big thing is fair use. Is it fair use basically means that as a human, you can listen to an old Blink-182 song right? And get inspired from it. Yeah, Maybe sure. use something that looks like one of their riffs, right? Because you're human. You have made yeah. of flesh and blood. And so you can learn this way. And that's called fair use. So if something sounds a bit similar, again, legally, sounds a yeah, bit yeah. similar, it's just like, I mean, it's, it's, it's fair. I just got inspired. I didn't want to copy. I just yeah. wanted to get inspired from. But when it's a machine, the only issue is that it doesn't sleep. It doesn't forget. It doesn't die. Once it learns something from someone else, it will never forget it. So that's why the concept yeah. of fair use that all these technology companies are pushing, in my opinion, is really bad faith because you know very well that you're not training something, first of all, to save the world. Because when people are going to start making music from your yeah. AI platform, you're going to make money out of it, right? So sure, it's, it's yeah. kind of like easy to say, oh, I can use that for free to train my AI, but then I'm going to make money out of it, right? Yeah, by the end of the day, I, maybe it's all money. Imagine right now you would find out 
that some AI has been trained on your music, what would you do? I mean, we have no no capacity to fight that, like in terms of legal things or whatsoever. So it will That's be very exactly complicated. Yeah. That's exactly the issue. You would not even know where to start. Yeah. Meanwhile, AI can be used for great things. Like I saw this guy on sure. X the other day that created an AI uh, platform where you can put your music contract in case a label or a publisher yeah. wants to basically sign you. You mm -hmm. just put it there and that stuff has been trained on a lot of other contracts and can help you point out at very bad terms, for example, for you. Oh, okay. This is a perfect example. You would have to talk to a hundred or a thousand artists that already signed a deal similar to yours to potentially find out what are the issues in your contract. Yeah. Or like someone trying to... Not I wouldn't totally know a lot, that amount of people who got signed so, to start. So AI in that case is actually really yeah. cool. Like you use collective knowledge to yeah, it's for good. Yeah. yeah, I mm -hmm. think that this is pretty cool. For example, I, but, but yeah, the other use cases, I'm still not there yet because I don't understand exactly where it's going to go. Anyhow, I think, so, we, yeah, we really need to adapt because it's like when the internet started, you had good things, bad things. So my biggest fear is that before, for example, you, you had in music ghost writers, right? Or auto tune, right? So you had ways to obfuscate the fact that you actually didn't do or create something yourself, mm -hmm. but there was still another human in the room for ghost writers, for example, yeah. or there was still someone that could detect that you use auto tune or things like this, right? So your credibility and how relatable you are could still at some point be challenged. My little fear with AI is that imagine it creates an amazing song. You just take it, take the notes, take the harmonies and stuff and record everything yourself. You would have literally no way as someone challenging it to say, did you really create that? And you will be like, yes. And no one has literally any ways to prove that it didn't come out of from a human. That's my little fear yeah, here. I don't know how true. this is going to evolve. I'm but lucky I, enough. Some of my songs, I have videos from like the last yeah. five or six years, right? Ago. So I could still point at these videos on YouTube and I will be able to say, I wrote that song before AI. But again, yeah. I feel like the people are going to start writing music now. They will always be kind yeah, of Yeah, like even when it comes to lyrics, music. especially. Yeah. yeah lyrics. It's, it's... And also in the cinema, in the film world, with actors. And people do their arguments and all that stuff. Yeah. It's there, tricky. There, are, there is a, a movie premiere, like the movie script was fully written by AI. That was okay. cancelled in London just two weeks ago because apparently they had some backlash, but they're still going to release it. And it's the first, and you, yeah, it's the first script fully written by AI. And you take a look at the trailer and it's not that bad. And the script is literally yeah, yeah, yeah. a human writer Be that is being tasked to write a movie script with the assistance of an AI system. Okay. It's very meta because all of this has been yeah. written by AI, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It will be good because we are humans. So the thing of the error and of the less perfect side is it will be it will always be on something we humans do so if a machine does it of course it will be even better than what we do theoretically yeah i agree what yeah. do you think about we touched on dopamine real quick what do you think where do you think that socials and all this dopamine culture is going have you seen around yourself a lot of people that stop socials for example or I've seen people starting buying flip phones, for example. Have you seen some kind of a shift happening around well, you? Well, around me, no, but I have this friend of mine, but she does this for since forever. She has a Nokia 30, you know, those Nokia 30. Yeah, she has that phone since forever. And when you need to contact her, either you call, you send a text. If you send a long text, sometimes it won't get there because it will be like MMS, right? <laughs> and sometimes when you need to send her some image or something, it, she has Facebook and I send it to her, but she will go to Facebook now 
twice a week or something like that. And it's curious because it's a very happy person. And what I think is going to happen is, especially with uh, the new generation and the children nowadays, is we're going to have more and more like mental health issues. That's already happening. And I think there's this need to control the amount of, it should be done like the amount of, because sometimes you are scrolling and you end up like scrolling for, I don't know, like four hours or something. It's not healthy at all for our brains, for even when it comes to the, to the waves you, your brain is, is getting from, from the phones and the technology. It's terrible. We are going to start seeing this on our health very quickly, I think. I agree. Uh, a study just uh, came out showing that the um, suicide rates in the States is now above the last peak they had in 1989, which is when they were afraid that they would be nuked by the Russians. It's the end of the Cold War. Yeah. So, Imagine. and that coincides when literally the suicide rate started going back up with yeah. the moment social platforms starting exploding. And so Absolutely. I think there are more and more studies are now pointing out on the bad physiological effects of short dopamine kicks, which are okay. extremely addictive. So great for yeah. business because yeah. you can sell ads on all these social platforms. That's the point. Their yeah. thing is to engage you as much as possible in the app because that's how they make money. They want you yeah. to watch your phone, watch what's on it, and then you can see an ad. Meanwhile, people are feeling terrible, but I'm hopeful on that for two reasons. The first one, I think that because of generative AI, people are now able to recreate the conversations we're having right now and if you make us say something totally different. So I feel yeah. like digital content is going to be less and less trusted. It's very counterintuitive, but I think that we might actually see a resurgence of central sources of information, like back in the days when you had like a TV channel or something like pro journalist and these kind of things because of AI, the, 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 the floodgates of content, mm -hmm. fake content. The other one is because people are now realizing more and more that it's bad for them. And now you have studies, you have, you very likely have a friend around you that, that actually lived some kind of a bad phase in her or his life because of it. And we start yeah. seeing this at the macro level where the growth of socials that has been crazy over the last 15 years, to be honest, like where new users every year, right? It's growing like crazy, starts plateauing. Okay. Meanwhile, there is one category through the whole world in all the industries that is booming. And actually there is a resurgence. It's everything that is correlated to direct to consumer. Okay. Literally you, an artist performing in front of people or okay. bringing them in the yeah. studio to record with you going hiking, all of this literally is, seems to be going back up. So it seems like people start understanding that they want to go out more. They want to meet yeah. people more. They are realizing like Gen Z again, they were born digitally, right? And so yeah. they are actually discovering a lot of in real life experiences, which I think might be a good positive sign for the future. Yeah, because they're, they are for sure lacking something and lacking that human side and the emotion because they are a bit empty on the inside, right? I, I, like I, I, they I get these dopamines them. and all these things with the, in, in short forms and then what, right? So at some point, I, I guess that you come to the realization that this is all digital and, and it's good to actually have also some in real life experiences. I, I guess that the complementarity is the target. And I hope that this is where we're going. That's why when we build new platforms like the one I'm building, we yeah. mix music, recorded music, and music experiences. This okay. is this could be in the flesh or digital. I can send you the stems of my last single, for example, but I can also yeah. organize a meet and greet with you. So I think that if we manage to create new platforms that combine both. Yeah then we'll be less subjected to platforms that only make money based on advertising. 
hit us with very clear motives, right? You go on that platform because you love music. You go on that platform because you love videos. But you don't yeah. go there just because you've been hooked with the dopamine kick and you don't even remember why you're scrolling through stuff. Yeah. But you're starting like a big musical journey, right? And yeah. of course, so the, oh the single 17th of July, right? Yeah, that's it. Great. And yeah, very AI thematic, futuristic vibes. So maybe I think you'll dig it. <laughs> nice. So when you're going to do this, how do you plan to organize that launch? I always do this digital calendar where I have the days and, and for example, okay, on this day, I'm going to post this on TikTok, this on Instagram in the short. So maybe it's me just talking about the single on other day, it will be like a behind the scenes. So people can have that more emotional side of the thing. I, I always try to do like this calendar. I feel it's very important to have the, the marketing strategy behind it and not just release it and say, yeah, guys, it's out now. So and then yeah, it, that doesn't really work anymore. So that, that was, this is the last question, right? Like for fun engagement. So you create all that content to tease people basically, but then the issue is how do you bring them to actually what would generate money and or mm -hmm. better reach, right? And so when you do this at the moment, I guess you have a link in your bio. And yeah, when I they do. click, so, so that's the call to action that you show them, right? Yeah. Guys, all yeah. this is so cool. Click in that link. Yeah. And then it's going to bring you to yeah a like a funnel platform. towards uh, youtube or spotify or the things yeah amazing do you also have a band camp and a patreon i don't <laughs> i don't i think i i recommend everyone to take a look at it again we're going to compete against them right but my but whole point is that i wouldn't think I about it yeah direct to consumer you might have just less than one percent of your fan base that would actually want something more from you but yeah. again, this is what's called a super fan. And if you follow other industries like gaming, they represent 70% yeah. of the revenue. So I think that this is a, a potential revenue source that people should explore because maybe your yeah. fan base like very niche custom made things that actually you would be very happy to provide to them. Yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just eager to put the thing live on stage. And then when I do like mm. merch and all these different things, Maybe I will think about, you know, having that, mm. First the that music. website where people can, yeah, just like going through stages, through phases, right? But, but yeah, that's, that that's sense. absolutely a good idea. Yeah. Again, totally makes sense at first you do music and yeah. then after you go on, on this one. If right now you would have a magic wand, what tool are you missing? That's my last closing question. Uh, to help you launch this, right? Not like talking to a celebrity or whatever, a tool that could help you right now to basically be sure be that you're going to succeed. I think it would be great to reach, just like bling, reach your potential fans, the ones who like what you do, without paying endless amounts of money on ads that show to people that are not into your music and all that stuff, you know? So it, it will be great. Just to find my so people, case, that would find be my people uh, went. So people that never heard you, right? So basically a place. Yeah, yeah. That people that never that heard you. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like uh, new potential fans. Yeah. Get it. That so a more transparent way to access playlists with your potential yeah, fans. Find my people button like tick and they're all there. Nice. Even if it's just 50. Nice. Thanks a lot for sharing that. I appreciate yeah. it.